Hello and welcome! In this video, you will learn how to play the ukulele. My name is Bernadette and I'm a certified music teacher. I used to teach elementary, middle school, and even adults. And I've made this video so that you have everything to get you started in one video. If you find yourself kind of stuck on one of the sections, please check out the description box down below because down there, I will have more videos, more resources, and more ways to break these things down. So don't feel like, oh man, I can't do it. I, I'm terrible at this. No, no, no. Everyone struggles with the ukulele, especially entering the music world for the first time. So I promise you, I have more resources in the description box down below. Before we get started, we have to tune our ukulele. And there are different ways that you can tune an instrument. You can do it by ear, you can do it with a clip-on tuner, you can do it with a roadie tuner, or you can do it with a free tuning app. I use the app called Pano Tuner, it's like piano. I like that it's just really simple and it's free and I have that on my phone so I can tune anytime. But when I don't have that, I like just a really simple, cheap clip-on tuner. I've tried the other ones that are like $25 and they're colored and they're everything. I, you don't need to spend all that. So just the most basic clip on tuner is just fine. And I love that these have different settings. So if you turn yours on, if you have one, you'll see a C, that's for chromatic. I'll explain that later. G for guitar, B for bass, V for violin, and U for ukulele. I actually don't use the ukulele setting. I use the chromatic setting because when an ukulele is brand new, the strings are so far out of tune that it won't pick it up on the other setting. Now, if you have arthritis and the turning of the pegs hurts your hands, or like the, if that's the most painful part about playing, then maybe you'd want to invest in something like this roadie tuner because it has this mechanism here in the front that turns the pegs for you. So let me show you. It takes a little longer to tune, but um, here, I'll show you what that looks like. So you put it on the peg that you have to tune and then you pick on the string. And you see how it takes a little longer and it beeps once it's ready and then it's ready to move to the other string. So it, it's a nice thing to have, but it's really expensive and you don't need it if you can turn the pegs yourself. So the first string is a G. The musical alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it repeats A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you're seeing like something like a F or an E, and the string feels kind of loose, then you need to tighten it up to a G. And chances are that if it's a new ukulele, you have to tighten the string. So the first string is G. And on these little tuners, you want to do it until it's green like it is right now. Then you want to go to the C string. And if you see that it's too far that way or it goes up to D, you want to bring it back to a C. And you want to make sure that it's green. If you're using the free tuning app, you just want to make sure that it's really close to the middle. The next string over is E. And the final string is A. If you need to pause here to kind of find those notes, that's totally cool. Or if you need a really in-depth, slow tuning tutorial, I have one where we go like super duper duper slow, note by note. So I'm gonna add the link to that down below. Um, but hopefully your ukulele was easy to tune. So let's move to the next part of playing ukulele. Now let's talk about how to hold the instrument. It really depends on which size you have. So I'm going to show how to hold different sizes of ukuleles. So if yours is really small, soprano, and you're just an average adult, then you're going to put the ukulele on your chest. Sound hole can be right around like the middle of your body. And then pull your sleeves back if you have the sleeves like long sleeves. And then rest the forearm under, this is called like the bridge and saddle, under there. And then bring your hand up to where the fretboard ends and the body begins. 
So we're not going to strum right over the sound hole. I'll explain why when we start strumming. Just position your hand right here in this sweet spot. And that's how you'll know where to put the forearm. So now use that hand to hold the ukulele to your heart. And then with the other hand, you're just going to put the thumb on the back center. And this is how you would hold a soprano ukulele. My favorite way to hold the ukulele is this way. I like to cross a leg and I'm going to show some alternatives to the leg crossing. And I like to rest the ukulele close to my knee. Then the ukulele just leans back to me. And I love how it sits in this position. This is how I'm holding it most of the time if I'm not standing up. Now, if you don't want to cross a leg, you find that uncomfortable, you don't like it, you can get something like this, which is a footstool. You see this used a lot with classical guitarists. And I love that it folds down to almost completely flat. So that you can put this in a case, you can put it really anywhere. So I'll link this footstool down below, but there are many and they're really affordable here. So look up, look up, look up. We don't want the ukulele to be this high up. We don't want it to be this low down. Can you be a good player with the ukulele way down here? Sure, but you're putting yourself in a position where you can start folding the wrist and it would just make a lot of problems later on or if you have arthritis or carpal tunnel, that's gonna cause a lot of pain and discomfort. So I'd rather you start off in this position and prevent a lot of problems with your hand. Let's talk about how to put our hands on the instrument. This applies to whatever size you're holding. So I like to do a thumbs up, look up, do thumbs up, and put it behind the second fret on the middle of the ukulele. So the frets are these spaces here, these lines. So just put it behind the second or third fret and then what you're going to do is what I call Lego hand, you know, like Lego toys. And that's how your ukula, your hand is going to come to the fingerboard. It's going to be a curved hand. We're not pressing anything just yet. I just want your hand to be curved. Look up. I do not want the wrist resting on the ukulele. That's causing a wrist bending and that's not going to be good. And that's all, actually going all the way up to my shoulder. And you're going to feel that after 10 minutes of playing, you're going to have so much pain. We don't want that. We want the ukulele to come to us and for it to be comfortable. Yes, there will be some pain on the fingertips when you're first getting started, but that's normal. I don't want pain coming up your neck or your back. So we're trying to prevent that by having a really comfortable position. So I have thumbs up to the back, curved Lego hand. And then on the other hand, I'm resting it on the hip and the hand is right where the fingerboard and the body meet. When your thumb is up here, look up, and you're gonna try to do some chords, your fingers are gonna feel so short. Look up. Now look at this. When the thumb is in the back, look at how much I can reach with this. You can reach so much versus this, I can't go very far. Plus, if you train yourself with a bad habit, then later on when you see that it's limitations, it's going to take so much work to go back and untrain yourself. So the best thing you can do for yourself is to start with really good habits. In some of my tutorials, you'll see me that I'm strumming up here. The reason I do that is just usually I, I'm trying to get really close to the camera so that it's easy to see. But the sweet spot for strumming really is right here. So now let's go to how to strum the ukulele. Hold your hand like this. Pretend that you're holding something very thin. And no, we're not going to use a pick right now because the pick can damage the top of the ukulele. Plus, if you train yourself to use a pick, then later on you won't know how to play without one. So you're just going to pretend you're holding something very thin and then let the fingers fall. And you should look like this. Your hand should look like that. Now go ahead and rotate the hand like this. Rotate it, rotate it. Yeah. Okay, now bring it to the sweet spot where we talked about strumming, where the fingerboard and the body meet. And I want you to just glide your hand down. Look up. It's just down. It's just down, down. 
relax the hand. If the hand even opens on your strum, that's okay. It can be really gentle. It's not supposed to be firm. Look, this would be firm and incorrect. Look at my elbow and look at the forearm. I don't want this because it's gonna translate to your playing. Rest the hand, relax the wrist down. Just let go of the wrist. Just let go. If you're doing this, it's way too hard, way too hard. Try to play as soft as possible. Soft, soft, soft. If you can play soft, you'll be able to play loudly. So just really soft, just do a few strums. Now look up, because I always have the people who want to start off by playing over the sound hole, but this is what happens. If you're playing too hard, ouch, your finger's stuck. Your finger gets caught in that sound hole, and then it's really difficult to untrain how to strum that hard. So come up and glide down, glide down, glide down. Just do it a few times. Okay, let's do it together four times. One, two, four times. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, ready, go. One, two, three three, four, freeze. As a musician, we're gonna have to learn how to play together and at the same time. So don't do this, don't do this. One, two, three, four, or one, two. No, go at the same pace as I'm going, okay? Try it again. One, two, you can do it. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. There we go, one last time to practice that playing together. It's so, so important. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Great job. Alrighty, so now let's learn how to hold our first chord so that the ukulele sounds really good. If you need to tune right now, go ahead and tune. Mine's holding okay, doesn't sound terrible. When you see this little graph looking thing, all it represents is the ukulele. So we are representing the nut, this part, look up. And then we're representing the four strings, G, C, E, A. And then we're representing these fret wires with those lines. So when you see a dot on the third fret of string A, that means that you're gonna put your finger there and you're gonna hold down the string on that spot. So please use the ring finger for this, the ring finger. When I see brand new ukulele players, they try to use their index finger for everything, but we really need to train ourselves, one, to have discipline, and two, to use all of our fingers. So start with the ring finger on the third fret of string A, and then here's something, the most important part of today's lesson. If you only take away this one thing from this entire lesson, make it be this. I would like for you to play right here. Look, 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 right here. On the very top tip of your finger. Look, 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 go ahead and point to this part yourself. Look, students always wanna play with this. Look, 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 they always wanna play with this. No, 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 no. Play here. The straight, when, it's like the instrument is an extension of yourself, right? So do the Lego hand and now point, point, point. So if you're doing a Lego hand in front of your face, you should be pointing up, straight up. It shouldn't be in here. No, no, no. It should be right there. So if you take your ukulele, pretend you're going to nail your finger into the fretboard. You wouldn't nail it this way, flat. Look at how ugly that looks. No, no. We want to do that curved hand. And what I say to my students, look up, is I want a house for a mouse. The mouse lives right here. When you do flat fingers, you squish your mouse. We're not gonna squish the mouse. We're gonna do a, a really nice rounded hand, full house for the mouse. And if you're holding the string down and you get this, look, 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 pick the string that you're holding. If you're getting this, that means that you're not adding the right amount of pressure. So reposition the ukulele. Bring yourself up. Don't do this. <laughs> Bring yourself up. Unfold your body. Thumb up and the back. And add that nice amount of pressure and just pick on the string you're holding. <gasps> Once you get that sound, 
then you're ready to do a little gentle strum. <laughs> so that's our C chord and it sounds so pretty. This is why it's important to tune though. Make sure you're tuning because if you're not tuning, it's gonna sound like Halloween. We want it to sound really nice. So go ahead and look at my hand right now. See how like, yes, we started here for the, the strumming hand, but you can relax into, you know, the fingers not being perfectly folded. That's okay. This is just a starting point and then you can let go a little bit, okay? By the way, if you're enjoying this lesson and you'd like to join live lessons, I teach via Zoom on my Patreon community. So Patreon is a website that allows you to support the creators that you enjoy and in exchange they'll do something or give you something so what i give my patreon members is live lessons on wednesday and thursday every week and once a month on saturday as well as like hundreds and hundreds of pdf printables so um when you join you get access to everything so if you'd like to join a live lesson join our patreon okay so you're strumming already right now let's do it four times together. Don't strum faster. Don't strum slower. Let's do it together, okay? And I'm gonna change the tempos, so it's not always gonna be that moderate, nice one. All right, so let's do a moderate, nice one to start. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, stop. Let it ring. Learn to start letting the last note ring, okay? So many people like to let go or stop the strings. Let them ring. Let's do it again. One, two, ready, go. Let it ring. Okay, let's change the tempo. Let's make it faster. One, two, wait, let me try again. One, two, ready, go. to wait on the slower tempo okay so now we've learned our C chord let's learn a new chord our new chord is a minor that's why it has a little M next to it it's an a minor and a minor we're gonna play with our middle finger so remember try to get away from only using the index finger that's gonna hold you back in the long run so use the middle finger for a minor and you'll notice on the chart that A minor is on the string closest to your face. So we can encounter some problems. Let me tell you the problem I encounter with all of my kinders and first and second graders when they play this chord. What happens is this, look up. They have a flat hand and they mute the other strings, look up. With A minor, it is so important that the hand is perfectly curved, that you're playing with that very top tip of the finger and then test that string only and then test the ones next to it. And then strum once they're all ringing. So go ahead and try it. I'm gonna be tuning real quick, just a little tune up. Go ahead and try that A minor. And a really cool way to check if you're doing it correctly, look up, is to do this. Look at your ukulele from this perspective and you'll be able to see if you're pressing the other string. So go ahead and try A minor a few times. And if you're super advanced, try C and A minor. We're gonna play A minor and we're making sure that the string is ringing and that they're all ringing. So let's do four A minors together, okay? One, two, ready, match my tempo, go. One, two, three, four. Okay, now look up. We're gonna do C, C chord, four times, and then A minor four times. So here's where it's gonna be really tricky because when you go to switch, if the ukulele does this, look up. If it falls, 
That means you need to really use that forearm to hold it in place. Look up. You should be able to take off the fretboard hand. If you take off the fretboard hand and it's falling, then you're gonna be really uncomfortable playing. So bring the ukulele to your position and you should be able to just move the wrist for the strum. See, it's like magic. That way when you move, then you can jump from chord to chord. Now, if you're doing this playing position, make sure that sleeve is out of the way because I'm not the ukulele is gonna slip. If you're doing this playing position, well, yeah, when you go to switch, the ukulele is gonna fall because you are using both hands. So here's the trick. When you play your C, use the index finger up here by the headstock to hold it in place. I like calling this the ukulele bed. So the ukulele rests on the index finger so that you can do those switches, okay? So let's do four Cs, four rests, and then four A minors. Here we go, one, two, match my tempo, one, two, C with the ring finger, go. One, two, three, four. Shh, shh, shh. A minor. Yep. Let's go back to C chord. There's gonna be no transition time between the chords, okay? It's just gonna go from C to A minor. So this is a technique that I borrowed from a fantastic music teacher in Diamond Bar. Her name is Ami Garvin, and she talked to her students about shadow playing. And so she would remove one of the techniques to make the others kind of shine. So we're actually not gonna strum this time. We're gonna shadow play, and uh, we're gonna do C chord, and then A minor, but we're just doing the fingerboard hand. Look up, we're just doing this hand. The other hand is gonna take a break. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. C, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor. Try that again. One, two, ready, go. C, 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 A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor. Okay, if you need to do it a few more times, go for it. If not, let's add the strumming now. So that was shadow playing. We just removed one technique so that we can focus on the most challenging part of what we're doing. So now let's try it. We're gonna strum this time. One, two, ready, go. going we're gonna go from C to A minor so if you need to look down at the fretboard at what you're doing it's totally okay to do so but sometimes the ukuleles become anti-gravity and I notice that they start turning this way and the wrist look up the wrist starts getting bent look at how uncomfortable this looks when you look at it that way no, 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 bring it down. Relax the hands. Here we go. One, two, you can do it. One, two, breathe, go. Okay, so now let's learn two more chords that you're gonna use so much with many, many songs and we'll be able to do a few songs already. So let's learn F chord. F chord is unique in that it needs two fingers. So that means that we're gonna have to be really careful to only press the string we're holding and not the others. We're gonna use our peace fingers or victory fingers. 
index and middle. The index is going to be on the first fret of E string. And the middle finger is going to be on the second fret of G string. Now look up. Go ahead and hold the ukulele this way and check and see if your fingers are being lazy and they're like muting or if you're using the top tips. And by the way, if you ever teach somebody else ukulele, um, use this technique with them. Because you always want to teach people to be independent and to be able to check for themselves, you know, if they're doing something wrong. So this is how you can check. So that's the F chord. So you can go through each string and see if it's sounding good and then strum them all. And the other chord is G7. So the index finger is already where you need it to be. The middle finger is just going to go over one string and look up. The reason why a lot of people struggle with G7, look up, look up, look up, look up, is that they want to hold the fingers parallel to the frets. But this is what you need to do. Here is the secret to making these chords ring. Look up. I'm going to pivot. Look up. Pivot up. And that's going to make that ring finger fit. If I try to add the ring finger without doing that rotation, look, it wants to be on the third fret. That's not the chord I want. It sounds very Beatles. It's been a hard day's night. So bring the hand up. Like the knuckles should be up at the headstock. That's how far a high it needs to go just whoop, straight up okay and that's gonna make those other two fingers fit i had that buzz here. did you hear it? i buzzed i wasn't holding it with enough pressure so i'm gonna bring the ukulele back to playing position so that you can see how that rotation looks look 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 what for the g7 so let's do four f's four rests and four g7s in shadow play style, so not strumming. So four Fs, here we go. One, two, three, four, F. F, 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 rest, rest, G, seven, no, G seven, G seven, G seven, G seven. Okay, so, I know we kind of went lightning fast adding these two chords. So if you need to pause here and do a few more shadow plays, totally okay, totally okay. So let's try that again with shadow play, starting on the F. And look up at my hand, look up. This is the entire switch. F, G7. It's not, it's not so crazy, right? F, G7. It just feels crazy because we're not used to holding our hands in this position or moving our fingers this way. So it's all very new for our hands. And they're like, what's happening? So it's okay. It's okay. All right. So now let's do that F shadow play. One, two, ready, go. F, 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 rest, 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 G7, 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 G7. Back. Great. Now let's start. Get ready with the F. One, two, ready, go. Rest, rest, switch, ready, go. Yay! Now we're going to remove the rests. No rests in between. So let's try it shadow playing. F and then G7 with no rest in between. Okay, so you're gonna have to think fast. Look at your hand if you need to, just make sure you're not rotating the ukulele. Keep the ukulele in a really nice spot. Here we go, F, then G7. You can do it. One, two, shadow play, ready, go. F, 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 F G7, two, three, four. Let's try that again, let's try that again. One, two, ready, F, one, two, three, four, G7, one, two, three, four. Alrighty, now we're gonna add the strum. But if you need to pause here and practice that a few more times, even one or two minutes of concentrated practicing shadow play style, you'll get it, okay? You can totally do it. I promise you, you can do it. Okay, here we go. F, one, two, strum it, ready, go. One, two, three, G7, next. Okay. So go ahead and 
continue practicing this in shadow playing as I talk and make sure that you're opening that hand so that the, the fingers fit, okay? So keep doing this shadow play as I talk. We're gonna, we're gonna actually start playing our first song. So the C, A minor, F, and G7 chords are chords that you can use in so many songs. And we're actually gonna learn two songs right now. So first, let's start with the one that most ukulele players learn how to play first, and that is Stand By Me. And the chords that you need are C chord for eight beats. So it's one, two, three, four, four more, one. Then A minor, eight beats. Three, four, again, one, two, three, then F, two, four, only four beats, then G7, and back to eight beats on C. So what I would love for you to do is shadow play as I strum. So shadow play first, and then you'll add the strums, okay? Because I want you to learn the switches first and get really comfortable with that. So you shadow play, I will strum. Here we go, one, two, you can do it, ready, go. One, two, three, four, four more. A minor, ready, go. switch from F to G7 is really fast and it's the most challenging one. Now if you're getting a lot of muted strings, here's the time for you to pause and look at how you're switching this way. Look up. So look at your hands and make sure you're doing that switch. Now let's say that you have some kind of quiet time or some time when maybe you get together with family members and watch TV or you ride a bus or something like this. If you can have your ukulele and just doing shadow playing, and just practice those switches, it's gonna pay off tremendously. Like, you're gonna be an amazing player by shadow playing. It doesn't feel like much practice, but when you come to your ukulele, you're gonna feel like you just leveled up five times. I promise you this works. So, let's try that again. If you're ready to add a strum, you can add it on beat one. One, two, three, four, one. Two, then A minor, ready, go. Two, three, four, two, and then a little faster switching here. F, two, three, G7, two, three, two, C. And you don't need to wave your arm like this. I'm just doing it to keep time, right? It helps us to keep time. I'm conducting here. But um, if you wanna do just a down strum on beat one, do the downstream and beat one. If you're ready for all four beats, then let's do that. Okay, here we go. One, two, you can do it. Relax the shoulders. One, two, breathe, ready, go. One, two, three, four, one, two, A minor, ready, hop. Be planning your F already. Oh, one, two, ready, add the finger for F. Nice, two, G7, ready, go. And from G7, slide to C. It's a really nice slide, right? From G7 to C, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're gonna do that again. I'm gonna add the words on top of your strumming, okay? But the strumming pattern stays the same for the whole song. This is why it's a standard for us ukulele players. It's just easy to memorize. And then when you meet other ukulele players at an ukulele festival, then you all can just bond over playing it. So I'm gonna add the words. Let me see if I can remember the singing. Alright, here we go. I'll teach you 
strumming patterns next, okay? Right now we're just kind of learning how to switch chords. One, two, one, two, ready, go. here and just work on this this is a lot already right we talked about tuning the ukulele holding it correctly how to hammer our fingers into the instrument making a hus for a mouse how to strum how to strum downwards where to like this is a lot already so let's take a break to stretch the hands and stretch the fingers and i want to teach you a little bit of educational psychology how our brain learns so chances are that you will have forgotten most of what I said in this video eight to 24 hours from now. So the best thing that you can do for yourself is review. Review, rec review increases retention. That means that you're gonna remember more by reviewing. So I wanna sneak in a little review session right now. And this is just my way of helping you remember more. And right now you're gonna be like, yeah, I remember that. But trust me, tomorrow when you pick up the ukulele, if we didn't review, you'd be like, what did she say? Why am I forgetting? Do I have to watch the video all over again? So here, okay. So you can hold the ukulele on your chest by your heart. You can hold it on your lap. We don't want it up here by our head or even here because that would make really awkward hand positionings. So we're just gonna relax the ukulele right around here or here if you're holding it this way push the sleeves back if you have long sleeves because the forearm making contact with the instrument is what helps us hold it in place for playing i really love if we do a thumb up to the back center of the neck kind of behind the second and third frets and then open and curve your hand now give me a C chord. That's the third fret with the ring finger, please, with the ring finger. And we're gonna strum where the fretboard and the body meet. And we're just gonna let the hand fall down. We're moving at the wrist. We're not moving the whole elbow. Just move at the wrist. Now let's go to an A minor. And if you're getting this, that means that your fingers are not curved enough on the fretboard hand. So curve the fingers. If you need to look up this way, look up. Look up that way to check your positioning. And if you're getting this, that means you're not adding enough pressure. So add a little bit more pressure and then the note should sound magnificent. F chord, you just need to add a finger to the A minor chord. And look up, look up, look up. You have to pivot the hand, rotate and open it for a G7. G7 is the most challenging because we need three fingers and they're all cramped in a really small space. So the way that you make it ring is by pivoting upwards. All right, now let's learn our next song, which is called The Lion Sleeps Tonight. For this song, you need to play the chords C, F, C, G7. So let's start it off on shadow play first. So first you're gonna give me that C, one, two, three, four, then we're gonna hop to an F, ready, go. One, two, three, four, then we're gonna hop back to a C. One, two, three, four, then slide the ring finger over a fret and go to that G7. One, two, three, 
four. So if you can do one thing right now is just look at your hand and do C, F, C, G7. And just practice that switch over and over and over and over and over again until it feels natural. C, F, C, G7. Each one is going to get four strums. So it'll be one, two, three, four, then F, one, two, three, four, then C, one, two, three, four, G7, one, two, three, that's Lion Sleeps Tonight. That's all you need to do for Lion Sleeps Tonight. Let me play it a little faster just so that you can kind of get it in your hair and your head and hear what it's supposed to sound like. One, two, three, four. You can shadow play along if you like right now. G7. some more spicy but what the main goal right now is just learn how to do those chord switches so if you need to pause here come back in an hour come back in a day come back in a week whatever your learning timing is does not matter take the time that you need but pause the video and then we're gonna do it together just playing line sleeps tonight if you're ready though let's just go all right here we go our tempo is going to be here, one, two, you can do it, one, two, ready, go, C, 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 F, back to C, and G7, nice job, ready, go to C, and if you want to just play the C, and not play the F in between. You just play the C and then rest. When I'm doing the F and G7, that's okay too. That's totally okay. Here we go, add the words.
you're enjoying this video so far, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, like the video, and in the comments below, let me know something about you. I do read all of the comments and I love seeing how people are from different parts of the world and different ages. Sometimes I get the comment that's like, I'm 12, and other times I'll get the comment, I'm 88. So it's really fun to see that this tiny little instrument can bring so many different types of people to the community. So let me know uh, where in the world you are. I do have a learn how to strum challenge that's five days long. So if you want to break this part of the lesson up into that challenge, I will add the link to it. It's right here on YouTube and it's free. I will add the link to it in the description box below. I'll also add a card on the screen so that you can use that. But try this, the, le the mini lesson I'm going to do here. And if you need more time with it, then go to the challenge. Mm -hmm. Let's start first with just down strums. Four down strums. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. Great. Now let's do four up strums. And that's going to look like this. Look up. See how the hand is not parallel to, I mean, not perpendicular to the ukulele. This is not good. It's going to be not nice you want it to be angled look at how the the index finger is just angled it's almost an acute angle right there right so strum up with the side it's the fleshy part of the hand if you have a long nail the nail's gonna touch if you don't have a long nail that's okay it's gonna be all fleshy the up strum is usually weaker sounding than the down strum so that's okay so your down strum is more strong up strum might be softer and it sounds different because you're picking the string the, you're touching the strings in a different order this way you're going to C E A, and the other way the up strum is a e c g so that's why it sounds different okay so give me four up strums one two ready go up 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 again one two ready go up 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 so now we're going to do down up down up here we go one two ready go down up down up one two two more times ready go down up down up one last time Ready, go. Down, up, down. Great, relax the hands. Now let's try Lion Sleeps tonight with that strumming pattern. So it'll be down, up, down, up, and then you switch down, up, down. If you feel like you're juggling, you are. And if you need to shadow play, this time you're gonna shadow play the fretboard hand. You're just gonna do C, Say it out loud. F, two, three, four, C. And if you say it out loud, it's gonna come more easily for the fretboard hand because the brain is literally telling the hand what to do. It works, okay? It works, so talk to your hand, tell it where to move, okay? Here we go. One, two, line six, nine. One, two, you can do it, ready, go. One, two, strum that we play with a lot of songs it can work with stand by me it can work with lion sleeps tonight let me play it for you first
there's a secret secret ghost drum in there and I'm gonna teach you what that means. So we have a down strum, do that with me, down. Great. Next we have a down up. Try that, down up. Great, so it's a down, down up. And you actually already did the ghost drum. Watch, you did down and then you did a ghost drum coming back up without touching the strings. That's a ghost drum. So down, ghost, down, up. Down, ghost, down, up. So you're doing down, down, up. Here's the most challenging part of the strum, okay? So if it's, if it feels weird, it is weird. Here we go. It's an up, down, up. That's the second part of the strum. Up, down, up. Up, down, up. Up, down, up. So if you can do the first part, down, down, up. And if you can do the second part, up, down, up. That's the whole strum. Down, down, up. Up, down, up. Ah, try again. Ready, go. Down, down, up. Up, down, up. Again, one, two, ready, go. Down, down, up, up, down, up. Okay, so your homework right now is gonna be to do that strum once per chord for uh, line sleep tonight. So it'll be down, down, up, up, down, up, and switch to the F. Down, down, up. the tutorial for Lion Sleeps tonight. A lot of it will be review for you because we've worked on it so extensively in this video, but you'll be able to add the strum with me. So I will link that tutorial down below. It's also here on YouTube, it's also free. So um, that will be your homework to work on that. Down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Once you piece it all together, you'll be able to play any pop song, any rock song, any ballad, like you can use this drum with so many things. And the four, the four chords that we've learned for today, that's gonna be the chords that you use on so many songs, like hundreds of songs, you can use it. So with today's learning or with this video's learning, you have so many tools to help you as you're getting started. So. Let's say that you've pressed pause, you practice the strum, the, the strum that we just learned, you practice the switches and you're ready to kind of do a playthrough of Lion Sleeps Tonight with this strumming pattern. It'll sound like this. Let's try it together. Let's say that you've already practiced. If you haven't practiced yet, then maybe you just want to do the C's and then rest during the F and then rest during the G7, okay? All at your own pace. Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready, go. C, down, up, up, down, up. steps in your ukulele journey are. The next steps are for you to really internalize everything that you've learned throughout this video. Okay, practice the strumming, practice your chords, practice your switching, practice good posture, breathing, using the very top tips of the fingers, the curved hands, all of that is going to serve you so well when you go to do other tutorials, whether it's on other channels or whether it's with lessons. 
Some of the people that are a part of this community have gone on to join ukulele circles. And when they say they're beginners, people are impressed because they come in with such a strong foundation. And uh, they come back and tell me like, I, I wasn't like the absolute most beginner at the group because I did the 30 day uke challenge, which leads me. I have a 30 day uke challenge where everything that I've taught here, I do it in the course of 30 days. So you get those really strong foundations in the beginning. We go into more detail on the body parts of the ukulele. And we are actually a lot slower at learning more challenging songs. Today we kind of went straight into the deep end. But the 30 day uke challenge takes you one step at a time. And by day 30, you're playing somewhere over the rainbow. So it's a really nice guided course. It has a free principle that I designed. My master's degree is in curriculum. So I love designing courses. So um, you can do that uh, challenge if you'd like. I also have another challenge called the songs you should know. So it's 10 songs that I think every ukulele player should know, but that is a pretty advanced challenge. So I, I would do the 30 day uke challenge first and then the songs you should know. I also have another challenge on just strumming it's a five day challenge so i recommend you do that one as well everything will be linked down below now let's say that you're loving my teaching style and you want to be a part of the live lessons that i do and yes at first they may feel a little challenging to you because the the crowd who comes to the live lessons has been coming for a while now but we always get newcomers we always get new people that start with us and that first week or two they're like, man, this is tough. But by week three, four, five, they're really strong ukulele players. And you'll see people of every level that most of those people started off in 2020. So um, they, they just had some extra time on their hands and they wanted to take on a hobby. And now they're part of the live crowd. So you can join us on that on my Patreon site. That also helps to support this channel and to help me continue being a full-time ukulele YouTube teacher. So it's a great way to keep the channel going. And speaking of keeping the channel going, I also have a little shop where I sell the items that I really love for the ukulele. So um, actually, it's not even just for the ukulele. I have these music earrings in the shop as well. And the clip-on tuner that I really like, some capos, uh, some ukuleles that I also really love. I package them all myself and ship them out to you. So that's another way that you can support the channel. I only sell a few um, instruments because they're the ones that I would recommend to my students and my friends. So it's not like this vast inventory of instruments. It's just the really nice basics at different price points. So you can check out the store. We also have shirts and merch that are really lovely and cute for ukulele. As a last little learning tip, I recommend that you play this video again. It can be when you're doing something like cleaning or a morning routine. If you don't have your ukulele with you, it's even better because you'll be watching the things that I'm doing. So often when I'm teaching students, I see the tops of their heads because they're just playing the ukulele and they're missing a lot of little tips that I'm giving along the way. So if you can watch this without the ukulele as a review session, when you do come back to the instrument, you're going to be able to do more things and get further along with your playing. So I do recommend you watch or even just listen to it as you would a podcast and watch it again or listen to it again. That'll help cement the learning. Thank you so much for watching this video, for choosing me as your first ukulele teacher. It really is an honor and it is like my life's mission to help everyone feel like they can be a musician no matter at what age or what point in life you're starting. And if you have your ukulele and if you play C chord, you are already an ukulele player. Remember to join our communities to make friends and connections. It just makes playing this instrument that much more fun. You can check out our community's magazine as well, ukulandiamagazine.com. It's a free digital download. And just get involved, you know, even if it's, if you're a lurker and you're just watching, it's really fun to join those communities. And stay tuned with the tutorials that I post on this channel. Thank you so much and see you soon. Ciao.